How's it going everyone and welcome to another Clark Boys Hunting Podcast. This episode is brought to you by no one because we're not sponsored on this podcast at the moment, but that's all right, maybe one day. Um, sponsored by our hard work. Everyone works around here. We all work to put the... Uh, yeah, yeah, sponsored by no one. This is yeah, a much easier no, way. <laughs> just paid for by ourselves. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, what we, were, what we decided we we're going to start the podcast off today before we get into our comments is... Um, Norm Hewitt passed away. Um, yeah, All Black, Marty All Black, Wellington Super Rugby player, Wellington Rugby captain. And how old was he? Younger than me. Oh. He was. How does that make you feel? Being being 50, 55, I think. You've had yeah. like three people close. Well, he's not close to you, but a couple of people close to you as well, same age as you or younger, pass away. Is that making you feel a bit? Oh yeah. I mean, I am. Yeah. Yeah, I'm starting to feel my age, really. I went up the hunting up this long river the other day with Harry and, and my mate, the neighbour, and um, it was a 10-hour walk and just about destroyed me, actually. He's done no fitness as well, which yeah. doesn't help. And then I was looking at the videos afterwards, <laughs> and, you know, like when you get tired and your face looks a bit drawn, eh? you, you bloody... My face looked like an old saddle blanket, eh? By the time I come out of there 10, ten hours later, eh? It's a rough day. Oh, big day. Yeah. It is yeah. a big walk out there. Like, I haven't even done it because I've, like, always thought, ah, oh, I'll go somewhere else easier most of the time for my hunting. Um, it's a hell of a walk. But, yeah, no, you, it, it does make you think, though. Like, even for me, thinking about you, it's like, oh, yeah, we, you never know how long you got with your old man. Yeah. So, yeah. But, I mean... Norm Hewitt, he got motor neurons disease, and that could happen only about a year ago, they reckon. Oh, really? And, um, yeah, so, I mean, th now there's a guy that that um, had some problems. I mean, not many people will remember, but he had some major issues with anger and drugs and alcohol. And it came out in the press because he made some mistakes. Because you're a famous all-black rugby yeah. player. But he turned his life around. And he turned it around and, and was helping other young people deal with the same things. Yeah. So what a great bloke. He was on Dancing with the Stars. Yeah, and brought a lot of people happiness through that, I suppose, as well. Entertainment. And, and so, you know, like it, it just shows that at any stage in your life you can turn things around, you can change, you can make things better. So it's not too late for you, Pete. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll keep working on some things, yeah. Yeah, so um, no, that's that's what the thing we just want to talk about to start off with, and then we're going to rock into our comment of the week. Uh, this, this comment was actually from a little bit a while ago, um, but it's relevant now. Relevant to it's, everyone. It's, it's relevant, yeah, to people and how a lot of people are feeling, I think, at the moment. Uh, so I'll just get into it. Um you're not wrong joking about needing a YouTube channel to support your hunting because we talked about how that's the only way we're really able to do as much hunting as we do. Um, I have two young boys. We love hunting, have two pig dogs and try to get out every weekend, but it's sad to say I'm being forced or squeezed out of a dream. Financially, it isn't just viable. It just isn't viable to be hunting at the moment with the cost of everything. It's quite sad to be giving up on the dream, to be completely honest, but I feel more sorry for young people trying to start out. Why? Because they'll need to spend a house deposit on gear to get them going, and for what? It seems it's just a dream to be able to hunt every weekend now. You've got carbon farms killing everything, prosecuting everyone. Trips anywhere away from home cost too much. It's just a bit shit out there for some Kiwi hunters. It's friggin' hard work, and I think the effort is starting to outweigh the reward, unfortunately, unless you're lucky enough to have it on your back doorstep. So, yeah, it's a pretty... um. Obviously, the guy's feeling a bit crap about it, mm, and yeah. I can kind of relate because if I, if we didn't do our videos and have our gear all sponsored and well, mostly sponsored and all of that sort of thing, like I, I would not be able to <clears throat> go hunting anywhere near as much as I am because I got a young family. It does cost a lot of money to have kids and take time off work when you've got, you know, one person one person in the family working because the other one's stay-at-home mum or whatever, you, it's, a, it's tough. I, I I think, yeah, I, I reckon, I think back in to my days when you guys were young, I didn't do much hunting at all. We didn't have big dogs. 
I had a bird dog, which was a house dog, which ate the scraps, so that, that was cheap. And and you might have only gone hunting on a trip once a year. So um, you do have to change your way you hunt for a while there because, yeah, the cost of – they call it the cost of living crisis. I call it the cost of COVID crisis is <laughs> up there and it's affecting people. And if you are living in town and you're trying to run a – do that sort of hunting. I, I reckon it's quite hard. It's much easier. Especially for, if you've got pig dogs, you know, because like, then you've got to feed two animals and if they get ripped up, you've got to them and pay thousands of dollars to get them patched up. Then you've got GPSs and collars and things that... Always breaking. You need repairing so that you don't lose your dogs. And then to get, to get good pig dogs, you really need to be hunting twice a week, I reckon, to keep your fit, dogs fit. And really, to have really good pig dogs, you probably need to have five dogs. So you've got backup dogs and things like that. Oh, five's too many. I reckon you need three. You need you need at least three. Three and then a puppy. Yeah, well, two, three and one is a puppy. One is a young yeah, dog. So that means that. maybe four because a young puppy. Yeah, I reckon four. Is but I mean, like that's not minimum. realistic in town. No, it's not. And then I guess that's why a lot of hunters like team up with another hunter, or some people share dogs, or. Yeah, and people hunt with other people. I I love pig hunting, but I probably wouldn't be doing pig hunting at the moment because of the commitment that's involved in it. And yeah. you can't do everything, you know. I'd just be like, I'd probably just do the. I'd go pig hunting with other people without my own dogs, or I'd just do deer stalking because deer stalking you can just go when you've you, got the time. You can do none for. Three, four months, whatever, and then, or you can even just once a year, yeah, take a week off, get your group of mates, or go by yourself, whatever you prefer, and go on a mission, get away, book it in a long time out. The thing about those hard out pig gunners is they don't like deer stalking, really. Nah, they just like pig hunting. Yeah, we're yeah. probably there's not many that are that do both, really. So, what's your answer for this guy? Keep keep thinking about it and working it out. I think for me, the, I you know I went away from pig hunting where you guys were all young. Yeah, that's what and I was then sort of once you guys got to teenagers, we got back into it. That's like that chat we had the other day about taking it to to the the kids' level, you know, and maybe changing, maybe adapting to something that's a bit more practical to to the kids. You know, I don't know how old they are because you know they might be fifteen or thirteen, yeah, or whatever, yeah. but if they're younger than that, then going on a deer mission and camping and lighting fires and doing just the basic stuff like that's probably better bang for buck in terms yeah. of the kids enjoying it, you being able to not put too much pressure on yourself financially and and time-wise. Because, you, you know, if you've got pig dogs, you care about them and you want them to be getting lots of exercise and doing what they love. And if they're just sitting in the kennel all day, it's, yeah. it's depressing in itself. Yeah. But yeah, that's there's a lot of people feeling the same way. It's it's not easy times. You talk to a lot of people. I talk to a lot of um, when I'm dealing with sponsors or whatever, and, and everyone I talk to is pretty much feeling the same way financially in terms of it's like compared to what it was two or three years ago. It's, it's real bad now. And I mean, who can you blame for that? Like they go on and on about this cost of living crisis, and the, but I think, you know, we did it to ourselves. If you if you sit in your house and don't do any work for a period of time, then there's a payback period for that because there's all that, all that free money was just basically was just inflation. They're just fueling inflation like yeah. crazy, and the only way to get that back. To get the free paying for the free money is the high interest rates, which means less money going around, which stops inflation, which therefore yeah. sucks <laughs> for everyone. So we're paying the price of it. We are paying. We kind of you, you say who do you blame? Well, you can only blame yourself, really. Even if you didn't go along with it, then you can blame everyone else, <laughs> I suppose. But it's not just like, I mean, you got your leaders that are supposed to make good decisions, your prime ministers and the, and whatnot, and. And a lot of people blame them, and yeah, but it was a whole been, world problem. Yeah, it was every leader. Yeah. Well, not every leader, but most leaders. Yeah. But anyway, that's. But anyway, it's just a are. lesson. Yeah. It's a lesson, and if you're a young person going forward, remember this lesson and 
however many years when this next something like this will happen again. Well, these I, things come in cycles. I mean, for a young person just coming out into the workforce, there's not many jobs. Nah, it's hard to get work. Yeah, like people just aren't employing people, so that must suck. Yeah, yeah. Got to take what you can get. It's not the case of just being able to come out of university and get an easy job anymore. It's like you're at the bottom. <laughs> you're starting at the bottom even if you're out of university and you work your way out. You've got to earn your money. If you're going to keep a job in a hard economic environment, you've got to bring more in than you're getting paid. Well, that should be how it always is, but actually I don't think it has been. I think people have just been paying people to do fuck all. <laughs> Definitely, especially in the big, big, you know. Yeah, environment, Waikato's and all those, you know, they just, oh, yeah, we got a job for you, come in, and the bloody government, bloody pay for it, and everyone else is paying for it, and now even they aren't employing people. Yeah, yeah, well, governments have, just like everyone else, probably haven't tightened up as well. Yeah, well, this government's tightened up, and, that, and that's pissing everyone off. Yeah. But what were their options? Exactly. Can't just keep giving handing money out, and because you're just going to keep causing the problem to get worse and worse. Mm. So we just have to grind it out, dig deep, get through till 2025. That's Pete's philosophy at the moment. Yeah, well, I heard someone talking about that the other day, saying you know that was the catchphrase, get through to 2025. And then I heard someone else say, no, get through and thrive, not just get through, get through and thrive. But I don't know how exactly you do that if you're losing money or you know. Not got any money. Yeah. It's yeah. hard to thrive. It is. I mean, I you don't know, if you've lost your job or something. I know heaps of people are struggling with their mortgages, eh? Yeah, there's a lot of people that in New Zealand would just come out of, flo- come on to floating rates, eh? Mm. So that's going to burn. And then that, and then if they're self-employed and that work's drying up as well, so that's a double whammy. Your, your, cost, your biggest cost's gone up and then your income's gone down. Yeah, and I reckon at the moment it's pretty hard to, well, I mean, it's it's always hard, but it's really hard now to have kids and only have one partner working. I thought you were going to say have one partner. <laughs> it's really hard <laughs> to have one partner. No, that's easy. Well, no, it's not for some people. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it's, oh, it's um, I don't know how, you, how you're supposed to have a bigger family. We've got, I've got three kids and I've got grand, you guys that help out a lot in my wife's parents help us out and we've got a pretty good network we've got you know i've got a reasonable job and all of that but it's some you know if you're a one person wage in town we get a house because of working on the farm if you have to pay rent you have to pay all these costs it's 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 actually like impossible and it's sort of sad because like that's the you want to have one of your one of the parents of the kids looking after the looking after them. Well, I'll tell you what it all boils down to is basically a lot of the country revolves around primary industry. If you drive around New Zealand, there's green grass and animals, and that's our primary industry, right? And that's not paying. That's not that's not making money. No, for no, some farmers reason, farmers are not making money at the moment. So farmers don't make any money. So everyone has to work harder on the farms. But that people don't want to work harder on the farm. So the so so federated farmers and those guys answer to that is, oh, instead of saying, hang on, we're not paying these people enough and we're not giving them good enough conditions, and that's because we're not getting enough for our products. Products. Mm-hmm. What's the answer? Oh, let's get and employ some import some people that'll work for nothing. Work for less. Yeah, there's yeah. lots let's, of. Let's get some import people like in there. The but Filipino that, that's, workers in the dairy industry is like. A lot of people's answer to that's not, being not, able, answer. not being able to find staff for the money that they can afford to pay them, no, New Zealand staff. That's not that's not an answer. No, not a long term answer. That's a stupid answer. I'm not nothing about because I've only heard a lot of good things about the Filipino workers and, but really you're just you're getting away with it because they want to live in New Zealand. You know? That's right. You're, they're getting the good thing they're getting out of it is getting to come to New Zealand. But if it wasn't that, they wouldn't even be doing it, probably. No. Nah. You know, if they could get the same money well, back home, they'd be, they wouldn't be even be here. Well, they probably what they'll do is come and work for the two-year visa, right, and then they'll get their residency and then they'll go, like those guys at the moment, they're driving logging trucks for yeah. us. Yeah, oh, they're good workers. Yeah, so they drive, like, so, okay, let's not get up at 
let's not work seven days a week. But, but, but it, we still get up. Early, they're still getting up early and driving trucks, but they're not having to work seven days a week. So it's, on one hand, it's really bad that for the industry, right? That there's we've we haven't actually got New Zealanders wanting to keep doing the job. That's bad for the future of it. It's great that they've got these uh, overseas workers that are willing to do it, but that's a temporary thing. And but on the other hand, I kind of think it's is it good that if you're not going to take a job that's hard, someone else will take it. You have to actually it's actually making people step up for once and actually work properly. You can't just get a cushy job anymore. Is it like a reset? This thing at the moment. Yeah, is, uh, is that like a, is that a positive thing of it? Like no more buddy lazy people. If you're lazy you get nothing. It hasn't I don't reckon the reset's quite hit that yet, eh? Because I still know a whole lot of people do. But not a lot. <laughs> yeah. Right? And get paid big salaries. So I mean in a way, wouldn't it be nice for it to you know, I don't want to say that. Wouldn't it be nice to just for the for the recession just to push all those people out and to say, yeah, right now you have to actually go and work. Well, that's what would have happened in all the like the Great Depressions and all of those sorts yeah. of things. It'd be there's no no room for the bloody lazy and the weak when that happens. Well, know? well, like you said before, unless you're unless you're generating more than you earn, then you don't deserve a job. So, so the the positive side of it is you may get rid of. The entitledness of the world at the moment, and feeling like you're owed something, yeah. When you're not owed anything, you work for what you get. You have to prove you have to prove that you're worth whatever you get. Yeah, it's unless you're a plumber <laughs> <laughs> or electrician, no, and you just don't. charge whatever. Well, that's what they can do at the moment because there's been a lot of work. Like that's not that's not. That's just being smart businessmen. If you can get as much work as you can and put your price up as to whatever it is and you're still getting the work, that's just being smart at your business. But the problem is once the people doing needing the work done don't have any money, then these people charging too much are going to not yeah. get any work. And so it's going to it's, it's, it starts so off how the far away, how and it far filters away, down. How far away is that? I don't think it's that far at all because I think – I've already heard, I've got friends in the building industry and they're all all saying the same thing that they're having jobs start falling through bigger jobs or jobs that are coming up you know and little things are happening that usually you'd have two or three lined up and now it's down to one or a couple of renos or you're going into renos yeah and that's so it's it's hitting that now I reckon it goes farmers tradies, and then everyone else after that. Yeah, I mean, we, hopefully we're not too far away from things turning around, but, yeah, it could be. We'll just have to wait and see. Just try not to stress about it too much. No. What happens if you lose your, lose everything is you get to um, not work. Yeah. <laughs> Go on the dole. I think about that, eh, because like somebody was said to someone the other day because they were sort of complaining about you know, their job. There'd been a big error in their job and um, the guy was just mortified by it. You know, he was devastated because there'd been a been a major problem in, in his work and, and this other guy said to him, you know, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't look at it like that because, you know, you've got your family and all that sort of thing. But I, th I, I think there's two parts of a man or a woman, there's two parts of your life, and, and one is your work and your purpose, and one is your family, and they're both equally as important. Because, yeah, they, they're both equally as important, because if you, you do your work to be successful for your family, right? To provide yeah. um, for your family and to set them up for their future. And and it also gives you your identity. So so to fail in either to, it's tough. To, to, is 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 equally as bad. Do you think they'll be nice and being like, well, at least you've still got your family? Like, no, I think they generally thought I think they generally thought that it doesn't matter about your work. It doesn't matter about your work, but I think it does. I, I, I think, think it your does work too. does. I think, I think that's really I, hard for anyone. I go back to right the original man, Adam, 
and God, <laughs> yeah. God gave Adam the garden to tend. He had the garden of Eden, and his job was to tend it, right? Yeah. And he didn't have a wife or kids or anything. That was his whole purpose yeah. and, and his friendship with God. Yeah. It sounds a bit, but this, to me, yeah. it's just history. This sounds like, oh, that's hairy fairy or make believe or whatever, but to me, it's just history. So that was that was his job. Okay. And it was really important, right? Yeah. But then and then but then God said, Oh nah. You need a partner, so he made woman. Yeah. Right? So then the two things are equally as important. In actual fact, yeah, maybe you said work, you needed that. Maybe work's more important because it came before woman. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't think What do you mean? You don't well, know. so why would you rather lose your job or your family? <laughs> You have to think about that. What? Well, well I'm, I'm thinking of a way to argue against what you're saying, not thinking about it. That's a bloody lose? tough one. Family, job. Mm. <laughs> I um, think I've trumped you there. I don't think you could say that work is more important. I could say it's more possibly more important to your identity. I mean, to holding the two things together in unison and keeping them going good together... Is, is 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 important? Yeah, I'm not arguing that. I'm just not saying. I'm just couldn't agree with you when you say that work could possibly be more important than family because you can just get a new job. You can just figure out a way to start putting one foot in front of the other. And yeah, but what if you what if you didn't have a job? Yeah, right? you didn't need to have a job. Okay. And you could just have a family and, and all the money you needed. You needed. So you didn't have to work. You just got, and they had no purpose apart from doing your family. Would that be a good thing for a person? Well, this is the thing that I think about. I've thought about it a bit, actually. Because like, you don't I reckon, want to work. No, no, no. Because I'm like, I've done this like personal growthy yeah. reading about all that sort of stuff and how to be a better person, how to be happy and all of this shit. Um. And I, I, I kind of reckon if you are fully happy with yourself and everything and your f- life, you probably should just live like a hippie. Yeah. And just live on the land, spend time with your friends and family and, and just be really present in that and enjoy that. And I think that's – but I think you probably need some something else. And if you didn't have work – I think it has to be like a religion or helping, you know, like a purpose, like helping other people, being part of a community. And and that can, some people that might be able to just be your family, but for a lot of people, I think it needs to be your sport team, your, you know, your, your wider community and helping people grow. Because it's like if I won all the money, you know, lotto, Four hundred million dollars. That's a big lotto. No, 20, American say, lotto. American lotto. No, let's just say New Zealand lotto. Twenty three million. Or just enough money so you never had to work. Well, okay. the guy in Tora, he made got twenty three million. He had basically five years. <laughs> yeah, so like you can lose it pretty yeah, fast. That's only enough for five years, from if, what I saw. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, like, if you had it all, what would you do? If I, I thought about this, I was like, if I got all that money I needed, what would I do? And I'd probably do pretty similar to what I do now, but just with a bit less. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do that much milking. So a bit less, maybe just a bit less pressure. Because I feel like all the things we do are good, wholesome things. You know, like I feel like farming, growing food, feeding people. And just the actual job of being outside and working, I think that's like just genuinely a good thing for people to do. It's kind of natural, I suppose, is the best way to describe it. It's just the natural thing to do and it feels good. And it's good for you to get out there and shit weather. It's good for you to get out in good weather. It's just part of having some reason to get going and, and, and provide um, but yeah, it's just the, the the stress to make enough money is probably the hard part. So you have to do a bit more than what you would like to do. To make money. Yeah, it's like that work-life balance that people talk about. It would be good to have... What the fuck is work-life it balance? It would be good to... Who says that? 
Who says that? People, <laughs> would be good. people with really rich parents, I reckon. Yeah. But that if you, like I say, if you had all the money in the world, you would have the perfect work like life balance because you'd only work when you felt like you needed a little bit more than what you were getting from your family. Uh, rather than working so that you can provide for your family. Yeah. And when I say working, I mean that could be like community stuff or whatever, saving the planet. Like some people, that's their religion is like going to protests about global warming. Like they need something. That's well, they thing. chuck their plastic wrappers in the rubbish bin. Yeah, well, they drive down, they fly on a plane to go somewhere and do that. Change their baby's disposable nappy and chuck it in the bin. <laughs> shit in it, and that just goes to the goes to the the um, what do you call it? Land, landfill. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. We're green. Hey, hang on, I just changed my baby's nappy. Good one. <laughs> Good one. Yeah, there's a lot of hypocrites. I mean, we're probably hypocrites at times as well. But it's um, it's an interesting thing. Tell us what you guys think about. Um, the balance between work and family, the work life there balance. There is none. There is none. It's just a. It's just a myriad of chaos when you've got young kids and working to get ahead. It's just a. It's you're just perpetually in chaos and tiredness, and you come out the other side. You know, eventually broken, <laughs> a little bit more broken and tired, completely broken, <laughs> but. You know, is it worth it? You look back and you say, is it worth it? Probably. <laughs> Probably <laughs> is. Probably is. You yeah. know, you learn a lot. Definitely. I definitely think it is. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, um, thanks for listening, guys. Yeah, we're looking forward to uh, getting back into the podcast. Sorry it's been a little while in between. Um, we will try and keep them coming. Carving's coming up, but Pete's keen to keep pushing, so we'll keep pushing. Keep giving us comments. Keep uh, letting us know what you think about things, and we'll we'll see you next time. Kia ora. Kia ora.